It's the Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by ANZ Home Loans for financial well-beings. And welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Breakfast, available on iHeartRadio every morning and on Spotify and Apple and wherever you get your podcasts from. Thursday morning, here we go again. The week is fast disappearing. I don't know if you found this week a really fast one. It's been fast here. The 20th day for October for 2022. Coming up in just a moment, we are talking to a couple of guests. The first is Candy in Perth there. She is selling luxury properties and we're going to find out in just a moment how that end of the market is going. And we're also speaking with Michelle Tynan, the CEO at REIACT. We're going to be talking about the minimum standards regarding the residential tenancy Act. So if you are a landlord in the ACT, listen out for what is coming and we'll find out what is coming very shortly from Michelle. And boy, you've got to be feeling for the Ukrainians with these Putin-fired drones that are hitting them at the moment. When is all of this madness and hellish nightmare for the Ukraine going to end sooner rather than later, hopefully. And if you're celebrating your birthday today on this 20th day of October, happy birthday. You're celebrating it with Snoop Dogg, the American rapper and producer, also actor. He is turning 51 And Viggo Mortensen from Lord of the Rings, among many other films, is turning 64. And on this day, pretty important day in Australia, it happened in 1973. The Sydney Opera House opens its doors. The iconic building began work way back, way back in 1959, at a cost of over $100 million. And in the current property market, what would that be worth, the Sydney Opera House? In fact, you've got to say that it's something that you just couldn't put a price on. We talk with leading property commentators with analysis, predictions, forecasts and what's trending every morning from 6.30. It's the main centre forecast with PRD. Selling smarter every day. And heading around Australia, checking on your weather today for Thursday. And in Sydney, expecting the showers to increase with a high of 23. Melbourne, expecting sunny blue skies with 24 degrees. Brisbane, showers with 25. And in Perth today, expecting one or two showers and your high of 24 degrees. It's your weekday real estate breakfast with news, interviews and predictions every morning on the Real Estate Podcast. Well, if you're a madman follower of the 1960s show that Don Draper was made into a household name, we're going a decade later into the 1970s because there's this fantastic looking property in Perth, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, uh, let's welcome into the Real Estate Breakfast this morning, Candy Italiano from Mint Real Estate. Uh, Good Good morning, Candy. Welcome to the Real Estate Breakfast. Good morning, Craig. Thanks for having me. Wonderful name, that Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do say it's easy to remember. It is for sure. How's things going for you there in Perth? It's definitely changed in the last six months, but by demand in the area where I sell in Cottesloe is still really strong, especially for homes that are all done, ready to move into. That's the big thing because people don't want to build or renovate in this market. It's too expensive. Yeah, that's right. Everything's gone right through the roof. And I guess uh, where you are too, it's very nice. You've got some coastal properties that you're dealing with. And I think the property that I just gave a nod to from the 1970s, gee, this is a nice looking property, eh? It's a brand new build, is that right? No, so it was built in the 70s, but it's been fully renovated. It's very cool, very different. Yeah, it's a very funky home. It's really nice. It's a treat to sell homes like that. Wow, you, it confused me because I was looking at it, I read the piece and I thought, now is that 1970s or is that somebody that's made a 1970s home? 
<laughs> yeah, no, no. It was completed by Ferguson Architect end of the 60s, 70s. It's very different to your standard home. You know, it's got beautiful north-facing front with those stunning kitchen Gaganau appliances and so on. And then it's got a whole pavilion out the back with full kitchen Miele appliances overlooking the pool. So you've sort of got your winter kind of area and you've got your summer retreat as well. It's very cool. Oh, stop it. It makes me want to be in <laughs> Perth. Yeah. I know. It makes me want to move. Now, tell me, you're working in that luxury end of the market there in Perth. So what's sort of happening with people moving in? Are you still getting those investors coming in? For example, where are they coming from? I've mainly had, oh no, I've had a number of East Coast buyers who are here looking for homes. So quite a few of those have come through, but lots of local buyers as well. So there's still strong demand from our local buyers in the high end of the market. Um, with most of the high end homes I've sold, they're mainly to local buyers. I mean, we've got all the mining and, you know, our economy is sort of pumping. So there's lots of people with the dollars to kind of buy beautiful homes along the beach. But we still have the East Coast buyers coming back for sure. That is the thing about Perth because the market is sort of operating a little bit differently at a different speed, particularly when you compare it to a Sydney. Yeah, well, what's happening in the Sydney market? Because that's sort of changed quite a bit lately, hasn't it? People are saying it's a bit tough over there. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, you compare Sydney compared to Perth and everything that we've heard on this particular podcast, lots of positivity coming out of Perth right at the moment. The local economy there is going pretty well. Yeah, what I've noticed more than anything, a premium will be achieved on something special or something where people don't have to do do work to it. I think things that need work done or renovating, that price has been compromised in the last six months. Over COVID, they would have sold for a premium, but of late, they're a tougher gig to kind of sell. Yeah, so we're heading towards Christmas, as I mentioned. So how do you think things are going to pan out for you at Mint Real Estate between now and the end of the year? Yeah, well, I've got some beautiful properties coming to market, you know, kind of up to 10 million. So lots of beautiful beachside properties. But there's still a lot of movement in the market. I mean, most people who move to, say, somewhere like Cottesloe don't want to leave, but they might upgrade. And the oldies don't want to leave. They're like, Candy, you're going to take me out of the box. <laughs> I love it here. Where am I going to go? Well, good to chat to you, Candy. And thank you for coming on to the Real Estate Podcast this morning. Thanks so much, Greg. Lovely chat. Informing you every morning from 6.30, seven days a week on The Real Estate Breakfast. Well, let's go to Michelle Tynan. She is the Chief Executive Officer at REIACT. And a very good morning to you, Michelle. Welcome to The Real Estate Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, you've got a few busy things that you're dealing with at the moment. One of them is the minimum standards into the Residential Tenancy Act. How about starting there and just telling us a little bit about some of those changes? Yes, the ACT government is embarking down the path of introducing minimum standards into our Residential Tenancies Act here in the ACT, and it's landed on minimum standards for ceiling insulation um, for all rental properties in the ACT, meeting a certain standard, which we believe is to be R5 BATS. We're still waiting to see what that's actually going to look like. They've got a proposed bill, which or a draft bill, which is, is out at the moment, and that will go before the Legislative Assembly, but that's just purely the mechanism to enable minimum standards to be introduced into the actual, actual Act. So we're just now waiting with bated breath to see how we, we have to be compliant in terms of the minimum standards and the insulation itself. And there's a lot of concern, I guess, within industry as the cost to that and, and how that will be implemented and over how long a time and what sort of assistance there'll be for landlords to actually financially be able to meet the requirements. And I guess from a landlord's point of view, what should they be thinking about uh, once that goes through? What we know so far is every pro every rental property in the ACT will have to be certified that it meets the minimum standard for ceiling insulation. So again, we don't know what the compliance trigger for that will be, whether it'll be every home rental property or unit, whatever in the ACT will have to have a certificate and be inspected to say that it does meet the standard. And then those that don't will then have to obviously upgrade insulation or install installation that meets the required standard. Okay, so let's change tact. Canberra's best real estate agents. Tell us a little bit about that because you were at the front and centre of that. 
The Awards for Excellence program has been running now in the ACT for 28 years and we've seen, you know, lots of varied and different um, size awards and and the number of people that actually enter. But this year we had record nominations and record submissions, which was really pleasing. And given the year that we had, given we had a lockdown in the ACT for for 12 weeks plus a federal election, which certainly makes a difference to the market in Canberra, um, it was a really pleasing result for, for all our members. And are you surprised at how many women these days have gone into real estate because it seems to be on the climb? No, not really. I mean, real estate is one of the very few professions where we're not gender-based pay scaled. In, in other words, it doesn't matter if you're male or female as to how much money that you can earn or that, that you can, can contribute to in terms of sales and commissions and, and property management fees and things like that. So it's not surprising at all that women are now seeing the, the potential growth for their, their income and stability in, in an actual um, industry whereby um, gender isn't a factor. But what about the auctioneers? Because they're starting to get into being auctioneers around the country. Um, auctioneering in the ACT is, is a really um, dynamic chapter. We have a very strong chapter here at the Institute and we have equal male and female competitors within our, our actual chapter. Um, we were the first um, state or territory at the Australasian Auctioneering Championships to ever have a female finalist and that competition's been running for over 20 years. So in 2019, Jenna Dunley was, our first, uh, was the first ever female finalist in that competition. So in the ACT, female auctioneers are very strong and we have a really good program that they can... They can come through and hone their skills in the auction chapter. So it's it's um, for us, it's it's just a, a normal part of our, our daily business that that we have the auctioneering and, and the females or women really enjoy that their real estate genre, if you like. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Good on you. Thank you, Michelle, for coming on to the real estate breakfast this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. We connect you to the best real estate information across Australia. The Real Estate Podcast. 